lecture now. The lecture note is in a flash drive. And uh, this road, they have a copy now. If you don't have, you can ask them, they will definitely uh, give you. You see a lecture note called student lecture note. It looks like this. You see data sources and processing. Then you see KNN, then you see NiBase. Then those are the things you are going to see inside that particular lecture note. Okay? And I, I have to thank Prof. Jilla for giving us enough uh, background to what we want to do. Okay? And I'm sure you understand what the message is. Okay? Can we start? And, and I think you understand what Prof. has actually um, uh, taught us today. When he talk about the machine, basically machine learning. Okay, that's what he talked about. Now when we talk about machine learning, basically, we're talking about about four different classifications to it. Okay, we have supervised learning, like, uh, you know, like everybody knows what it is. So we have supervised learning. Then we have unsupervised learning. Okay, I will call it supervised, unsupervised learning. Then at times, some people say semi-supervised. Okay, they have that. Then there's another one called reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning. That means we can have that kind of classification, you know, with the machine learning. When we say supervised learning, we say that we have input and we have a target. That's your supervised learning. Okay. Whether you're on supervised learning, you know, you don't, you have the input, but based on the input, they define their pattern, okay, how they should be, okay. When the reinforcement, reinforcement learning is more like you have a system and the system learn with the environment. A very good example is that you design a game like a Notando, the chip, what children normally play with. You design that, but as you begin to play the game, the, the system, you begin to learn how you can complete your own task given. That kind of a system is what, where you use what we call a reinforcement learning. You learn with reward. You, you miss the target, but you learn your mistake. You, you, you improve on that again. You learn with mistake, and you learn with reward. That's when your reinforcement learning come in. Now, but our interest is to take you from the basic thing that you need, you know, to come into this particular space of machine learning. And I, I'm not going to leave any stone on top, but we're going to start today with, say, data sources and processing. Now, your ability to know the type of data that you need to solve the problem is very crucial or the way you are going to collect the data or the experiment you want to conduct to make sure that you have the data that you want to use to achieve your machine learning is very, very crucial. Now, the first lecture, I'm going to walk around the area of data sources and I'm going to give you a few areas where you can find your data. Basically, if you are working, if you are doing any research in machine learning. Now, uh, let me just start by recording as well. The first thing is, where are the sources of data when it comes to machine learning? And there is UCI, UCL machine learning repository, where you can have a lot of data for you to work. Um, we can go there. Um, so that we can see if we can load that and go to that website so that we can see if we can get a lot of data depending on your field. If you have, if you have the USB or the PowerPoint, you can also load it. Load that data and be on the same page with me. Okay. The first thing is I want to look at the repository so that where we see the data in terms of the machine learning. We have a lot of data that are available there. Can you load it? Are you there? Sorry? Sorry? I can't hear you. And I'm just asking which one I'm loading the first one. Okay. That's the one I'm loading. 
My machine is a little bit slow today. Yeah. Are you all there? Maybe I can be talking to it because my system is still cannot download. traffic, volume, Facebook live sellers, a lot of data are available on that side. Therefore, if you are working on anything, just go to that side and look at uh, available data. And they are now, you see, these are just recently upgraded, you know. They collected it in uh, 2019. We have a lot, of, a lot of data that are sitting down there. Therefore, that's number one data source that you can actually use for, for your work. Okay. The other one that is, that is available is cable data set, which is also available for you to work on, depending on what you want to do. If you are doing something on sentiment analysis, if you go to there, you have a lot of data on customer behavior, you know, all those stuff are available. Then we have uh, others, other one created by this International Association of Pattern Recognition, which is also have a lot of image processing data sitting down in that particular repository. Then another way, where another, or another source of data for you is your call article paper. You see, anytime you are dealing with any issue, there is a paper that is dealing with the same problem like you are dealing with. The data they use in that paper, they will show you direction where that data is located. Now, take that paper, go to that particular source, and get that data. I remember one of my students, this guy will tell you, um, Selo will tell you, we were working on data, the mining data, but we don't have access to mining data. We cannot set up about 120 sensors. Where am I going to get money to do that? But we read a, an article that points us to a company that did that in Australia and were able to enter into the archive and we'll pull all the data out for ourselves to use. Therefore, your core paper is another source of where you can get your data. Do you understand? Is that clear? Yes. Okay, brilliant. Let's go on. Now, when we're dealing with when we're dealing with simulation, you must understand clearly that there are about three major categories of data. There are three types of data. The first one is your numerical data. And the second one is your categorical data. And the last one is your ordinary data. Prof was talking about categorical data. You must know how do you manipulate all this data. It depends on your data. First of all, have your visual analysis of your data. Look at your data and do a visual analysis of it. Then classify each class of your data and look at the attribute. Now, what do we mean when we talk about a numerical data? A numerical data is just a quantifiable measurement data. That's your numerical data. A very good example is your height. My height is maybe 5.5. That is a kind of a numerical data. What is my age? My age is a number. Therefore, all these data are kind of a numerical data. The second type of data that we have is what we call a categorical data. Now, let me just explain for the other numerical data, there are also two types that is popular. We have a discrete type of data under that particular uh, numerical data. Then we have a continuous type. Now, if you look at this graph, this is a continuous one if you look at it this way. But if you look at it from this point, you look at the point here, that's a discrete one. 
That means from continuous one, I can digitize that particular continuous data. Do you get it now? Mm -hmm. That means if you look at it, a temperature data is a continuous data. But I can digitize that particular data by saying in every five minutes interval, in every five minutes interval, five, 10, 15, I can digitize that particular data. That means I can make a continuous data to be digitized like a kind of a, a, a discretized one. Now, that means we have two types under a numerical data. Don't forget that. It's a discrete and a continuous type. Do you get it now? Mm -hmm. Now, and I made a very good example here. When you have a discrete data, five is a good example. If you have a continuous data, you see a fraction, that means every point has a number. You don't leave that particular point out. Now let's go on and look at a categorical data. A categorical data is a qualitative type of data. It's a qualitative type. Qualitative in the sense that there's no inherent mathematical quantity in it. Do you get me now? There's no inherent mathematical quantity in it. Now, sometimes we may assign a number to it. For example, male and female. Male is a categorical data, female is a categorical data, but we can attach a kind of a numerical data to it. We can say a male is one, female is zero. You will see why it is necessary when you are dealing with the machine learning to migrate your data from categorical to a numerical. It makes your computation to be very easy, like Prof was telling you. Now, when we look at this particular aspect that I put here, you see a marital status is a categorical data. A um, eyes color, your eyes color is a categorical data. Then there are also different types, blue, brown, green. They are all categorical uh, data as a very good example. You know, strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, and all those things. They are all categorical data that we, we, we're talking about. Now, when we talk about the ordinal, okay? So, um, I, want, I want to know something about the categorical data. On all our uh, researches, when we're doing simulations, or, um, especially when we have like, should we always convert our categorical data to a numerical field, or is there a way where we can actually uh, um, train? Uh, yeah, you will see when we do, uh, there's a problem we are going to do where we are able to basically predict categorical data. There is an instruction you need to give to the system to convert from categorical one into a cell or stream type. You will do that particular stream conversion in the code. Then it will keep it will keep your categorical data, but it will assign a background of binary to it, but it will still give you a prediction of categorical result. Okay? You see where we get there. Okay? Now, the other one is what we call an ordinal type. The ordinal type is a mixture of a numerical data and your categorical data. A very good example is when you give student grade, grade, you know this high school grade, they say A plus, B plus. You see, the two of them are the mixture of all those things. The other one is that when you go to DSTV, they want you to rate their service. For example, when you rate service, you say, okay, they say one to what? To five. And you put different color there and say, maybe this is white, this is white, this is red, and all those things. They color them. They, they use spectrum to color them. A good example is what you see here. When you say, okay, we get a good service, or we don't get the buy, we get the bad service. Or you have your acid base, and uh, if a level of acid, the level of base, the alkalinity, and you see the acidic level like that. When you grade them this way, that's a two type. That's another type. It's a mixture of the numerical data and the categorical data. They are coming together. That means the student grade is a good example of the ordinal type of data, which is mixture of the numerical data and the categorical data. Rating scale between one to five is a very good example of also that kind of data. Is that clear to everybody? Mm -hmm. Just remember this, there are three types of data. 
numerical, categorical, and ordinary. ordinary. Now, I will be doing that short, short explanation before we go to the code. Okay, now we are about to go to the real code. Are you there with me? I've made everything very simple for you. The first thing is that we're going to deal with importing data. Importing data into the market is your first step to do anything. There are two ways in which you can import data into MATLAB. The first one is by using a syntax. A syntax called read table is your syntax. To take a data and put it into the library or into the uh, repository of the MATLAB. The second one is by using a two, a two box, which is called import data two box in your MATLAB. Either way, it's okay. Okay, but we will see how we can do that. The first one is that, first of all, you see a data, this Excel data, I want you to download it now on your system. Download that Excel sheet into your system. If I expand, I will be Download that data. Can you see that data look like this? Did you see that? Okay, download that and save that into your system. Save it on your system, wherever you want to save it. You can save it into your folder or whatever, so that we can work with it. And once you've done that, try to load your MATLAB. Load your MATLAB and download the data. You've done that. data by number one by using your syntax one and what is your syntax your syntax is basically your read table syntax okay there are two command prompt you have the first one you have a command prompt here also you can open a script tab where you can do everything you want to do from that place okay now what I want us to do is that if you see what I've done in the lecture note that I, I gave you, you see, I just copied this, okay? I am just going to copy that, and I'm going to just paste it here. Then I'm going to open that bracket. You see what I've done? Then I open that. Are you with me? Now, let me give you the trick now to read your data so that you don't waste time with that long extension. What you do, look at me now. I'm going to go straight into my folder. 
You see, this is my data I want to import. Okay? Do you see that? Right click on that data. Go to property of that data. Did you do that now? You see, it's the easiest way to carry the extension into your. Have you done that? Now go to security. You click. You've done that. Just answer me so that you'll be able to. I'll be able to follow you. Yes. Okay. Now copy this straight away. Copy that and go straight into your MATLAB and put it there. And now what you do? Close the. Close that. Parenthesis, then close that. Did you see what I've done? Should I do it again? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, remember what I told you? The syntax here is read table. Okay, that's the function, read table. If, we want, if I want to read table by syntax into the MATLAB, the function is read table. Are you following? You do that, open your a parenthesis, the single one. Okay? Now go back into your data where you save your data. Okay? If you save it on the desktop, if you save it in your folder, go, go there now. I am going to my own data right now. And I save my data. Let me close this. I save my data in my folder, in the lecture one folder. Did you see that? Yeah. Okay. okay. Right click on that. I, you've done that. Go to property. Go to property. Now, when you open the property, it gives you general, it gives you security, it gives you details. Click on security. You've done that. Yeah. Then copy. Copy that. Align that and copy. Okay, copy that. Now copy. You've done that. Have you done that now? Yes. Okay, now go back to your MATLAB, the editor side, and paste it there. Have you done that? Yes. Okay, now close that parenthesis, close that uh, opening, and close it. You will see something turn to blue or gray or whatever. Then close that. Have you done that? Yes. Okay. Now, go to run. Then it will prompt you to save. Go to run. Then it prompt me to save it. Let's leave it like this first, so that we understand you can title it with whatever you want to title it. Maybe the process, process, data, whatever. But I will just leave it like this, then I will say yes. Now, notice one thing now. You see, he said data unreadable. Why? Because something is wrong here. I've done some, I think I copied something that is not making sense. Error in my one. Table. But I'm using 2019 and it's complaining. It's working here, bro. I used 2019. You use? 2019. 2019. Okay. At time if you use different fashion, it's my complaint. Uh, let me just let me reopen this. Yeah, mine is 2019. 
Just check who else is working, who else is not working. Not working. Can you check again? Yeah, if it's working now, let me know. If everybody wants is working, let me know. data into your mat into your mat lab. and what I want you to pay attention to in this data and I want you to tell me the, the first column which is location what kind of class of, of data is that what type what type is that the location one category category thank you the age America. the annual salary America. your opinion thank, thank you you must bear that in mind, you are able to analyze your data, you will see what will happen, where we begin. The first thing is that once you load the data into your MATLAB, first of all, have a visual checking on your, on your, on your data. It gives you understanding of your data. For example now, I'm thinking something here. Something is not right with my data, it's corrupt. That side is not okay, and that side is not okay. In MATLAB, what this one means is that not a numerical because he doesn't know the name you want to call it not a numerical that's not you get it now because he doesn't know the name you want to give to that particular data now this kind of data will cause you problem let's say you have you have 1000 data and you have a not 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 a numerical you have almost 20 or 30 percent of that in your data your prediction is wrong because of those particular data. You will see how we're going to manipulate a lot of that. Now let's go and see the other way, how we can import data into the MATLAB, the second way. The second way to import data into your MATLAB is to actually to take the data. Um, let's go there. down here student note data processing my data is sitting down here now just watch something with this particular data I want you to pay attention here it has some advantages that are very useful if depending on the nature of your data and what you intend to do there because in this particular level of import using um,
Yeah, in this particular type of importing, there's something very important there, which has a lot of value. Here, you can change the behavior or the properties of your data. If you look at this, if you want, you have different type, column, vector, numeric matrix, string array, cell array, you have different type. But the best option is always table. Now, you can also do a lot of stuff with this particular type of approach. You can change the, he has already identified, you see, categorical, it tells you this is a number, that is a number, that's a number. You can change the name, you can rename them, you can do whatever with the data in this particular, by using this particular import. Once you are satisfied, you just say import. You just import that particular data right away. Then you can close it after that. If you see now, I already import that particular data into your into the memory. Okay, is that clear? Do you all happy with import of data? Okay. Please, if you have a challenge, let me know so that we can quickly address it because we are going to be building on this. Sorry? Are you okay? Sorry? Now, there are other things that you expect to happen with your data. The question you are going to ask yourself, for, no, for, for this particular data, what happened to it? What are you going to do with it? When you have like thousands of that in 1,500 data, you've lost the meaning of that particular data. What are you going to do with it? There are a lot of syntax that we have in MATLAB that you can just instruct MATLAB to remove that. The syntax is called remove missing value. Remove missing value. R N M R S. Do you get it? Remove missing data. Okay. Now, what it does is that it's going to take away the data that are not that it doesn't want in that particular that's not not numeric okay data is going to take them out okay now let's pass some argument let's pass some function into that okay you can name it another one call it another let's call it another data uh, let's call it this and say, um, I will call it data 2 equal to remove, remember, remove missing. Then you pass the name of your data to it. The name of my data is data, okay? Then you can close it. Now, if you do that, what you can do also, you say remove dot, if I want it from age, age, and I close that. Is that the name? Okay, it's capital. I know that MATLAB is very sensitive to, it's very sensitive to your letter, like uppercase or lowercase. Now, if you look at this data now, under the age, you find out that that data, not available numerical data, is going to disappear. You are not going to see that data anymore. We are taking it off. Now let's go back to that the, our previous data. Look at this: 40, 40, 25, 30, 35, 44, 33. You are no more going to see this anymore in that particular data. Did you see that? If you look at the output, you see it has, it has bypassed that. Yes? So, this function, is it, is it, is it going to remove the data on the column based on the weight? It's going to remove the data on the column because you're going to pass the class identity on it. You see, if I have a data, for example, if you look at this data, let's go up. We have this data. I want to, I want to carry out 
I want you to remove this for me. I will say, I'm going to have a new name of data. Let me call it data 3. Equal to, you pass the remove missing. The name in which this data is named is capital data dot. If you want to remove everything in this line, you pass dot h. You close the bracket. If you want to remove all the, if you want to remove it here, you pass dot what? Anwar. There. Yes, I want you to do both of them. Okay? Remove that now. Here, remove from there. Do do that first. So let's say now you just pass in the data. The whole data set. Let's say the data. If you pass in the whole, that's what it is. If you pass in the whole data set, then remove that with all the same. It's gonna be it's gonna be the what you can do, do it now, pass it, you are free, it's not crime. The computer is not crime. Pass the whole data to it and let's see. But you know what it's going to do? I will tell you what it's going to do. It's going to delete everything in this line. Then the next thing is that it will look for where you got another now. It will try to delete these two. That's what it's going to do because you are not customizing it. You are losing two lines. You are losing two lines from your data on the road. Do you get it? The best way to do it, do it by column. Filter out all those non applicable data per column. Do you follow, are you following me now? If you do that to the whole data, it's going to take those two columns. Do that and you see that's what it's going to give you. But the columns are not going to Sorry? So you that the column, the columns in the data set, they don't like it. No, we are not, you are not going to use it anymore. But when we get to another point, you will see how to replace that particular not available data. You will see how we do that. The first thing is that we are removing it, okay? Any other question? Yes, sir. Are we going to delete that data? Are we going to delete what's the data that we are going to replace? You can have predict. Are we going to predict that data? Yeah, you will see when we get there. The first thing is that we are removing not available data for now, okay? Are you okay? Have you all done that? Yeah. Sorry? It's not Okay, are you okay with that now? So that we can move on. Have you done this? You remove that, you remove that. Are you all happy with that? Okay. Okay, once we've done that, you can see that you've removed from A and you also remove from the annual data. Okay? Now, the next thing you're going to do is to, how do you handle the missing data by, we want to replace it, okay? We want to handle, replace the missing data. There are two ways in which you can actually, there are two important things that we use. You will say, or three, the three steps, number one, you can use, you start with the mean. You want to remove, to replace the missing data with the mean value of the entire data, okay? Then after that, you will say, fill the missing one. That's the second step. You will find out the mean value for the entire data. Now you tell the MATLAB to fill up the missing one, okay? Then after that, you will update the data. Now you will update the entire data. Are you following me now? Those are the three steps that you have to carry out. Now, in this case now, I want you to carry out this. Name it, give it another name, call it maybe M1, like I call it, call it M1, equal to the mean, the data, the name of your data, maybe data one, okay? It will be data one. Then, what do you want it to replace? The age, the one on age. The second one is the annual salary. First of all, do the one on the age. Then you do the one on the annual salary, okay? Now you pass this particular comment on it, which is omit that particular not available number, okay? You say omit that, that is, 
It's going to replace that for you. Okay, can we carry on this quickly so that we can move on? Oh, you've done it. Have you done it? Yes. How many people have done it? Just run and go through it. Open the last page. Are you here? Okay. Open this. Have you done that? Okay. We are, we are we've done the missing data. Removing the missing data. We've done that. We've done the next one. Then we are now here. We are here now. Are you following me? But let's let's use this quickly so that we can speed up. I want to clear my data, just copy that. the missing data That's what he has, he has done now. But normally, the best way to do it is to take, take them out per class. You do that per class. Otherwise, you are going to have some problem with it. Now, I want to re replace each of the data in age. This particular class, I want to, re I want to replace it with the mean value of that particular data. Now, what I'm going to do, there are two functions there, the mean function and omit. Omit no, not available numerical data. Okay? That's what I want to do. Now, you see what it's going to do for me? It's going to calculate the mean value. Press enter. You see, I've calculated the, the, the mean value now for me, but I want it to take this particular value and replace it where I have not available data. So that I don't, I, can, I don't have too much error with my data or the number of my data will be reduced in terms of number. Now, 
you will, the, the, the function to use is called field missing data. Field missing data. Did you see that? Now, when you say field the missing data, what class of the data do you want to fill? You want to fill the age. Okay, that's what you want to fill. Then you pass that particular class into it. Are you following? Then, with what? With constant. What constant? This constant is what you want to fill it. Do you get it now? Now, it's, we now remove, we will now replace not available data now. We will replace now with this. Are you following me now? Let's do that. data you can see data age that is I want to replace what is missing then I'll copy this then it will update my table now what you notice here you will see now it has updated my table where there was a missing data none before did you see that is that clear do you understand how to replace the missing data now in using MATLAB? Any missing data, you can replace them. So, bro, yeah. why is it the case that we always using a mean to get the number of the missing data? For the numbers, it's me. When we get to categorical data, we will see that we are going to use modes. And you will ask me that question, why do we use modes? <laughs> now, but oftentimes there is a lot of different methods we can use anyway to approximate what are the missing data. But the most acceptable one is always me. Except if Prof want to say, tell us, because Prof is expert, he can tell you. Oh, you have a Okay. But then the most popular is the main. Okay. You cannot make mistakes. Okay. Now, are you okay now how to replace? Can I tell you to replace the missing data in Hanwha salary? Can you do that? Okay, do that now and let's see you can replace that data. It's three steps. Do that now and let me see if you can achieve it. That means from today, if you have any missing data in your data, you can replace them. Don't go delete them because you have 1,500 data. And 500 of that data have not, not available numeric data. Are you going to delete your 500? Then what are you left with? Therefore, you must find a way to replace that particular data. Are you okay with that? Okay, try that. If you have a problem, I need to know. Do that for me quickly.
Can you tell me what you get? Did you get anything very interesting? Okay. Is this take that out 
delete that section so that we corrupt that section. And I want you to see how MATLAB is going to replace a categorical data by using a different approach. I want to assume. Do you want me to do it again? Okay. Let me close it. Now, everybody look at me. Open, open your Excel. You open your Excel first, okay? Then, when you open it, go to data on your Excel sheet. Are you with me? Yeah. Now, go to get external data. Are you okay? Now, from there, go to from text. Say from text. Can you find it? Any problem? Are you with me? Okay, are you okay now? Can I start again? Can I start again? Because I want all of us to be, I want you to be, because once you miss it, you miss it. And I don't want you to miss anything. Are you fine now? Can I move? Okay. Then you say, from text. Are you following? Now go and find the source where you keep your data. My data is on my desktop. I will trace that where that data is. It's under my file and it's under um where did I keep it? It's under which file did I keep it? Machine, okay, machine lecture, student lecture note, data source. That is where mine is. I don't know where you keep that data I asked you to save earlier on. You remember that data? Okay, then I'll I'll do this. Now give me that. Do you have that as well? Yes. Okay. Now you say next. If you click next, next, it's not going to partition the data for you. You must take comma. Okay, take comma with it so that I can put some delimiter to divide to divide that data. Are you following? Then you say next. Then you say finish. Then you say okay. Then you partition the data. Now, what is my interest now? Is to corrupt the categorical section of that data. I want to take any of this data out and I want to replace it with the appropriate one. Delete this out, not like. Okay, take that out, delete it. I'm going to delete that. The data, I assume the data is not available. Just assume on the categorical data it's not available. That's what I want to achieve with that. Now, save that data now. You are not going to re-import that data into the MATLAB, and we are not going to replace that data now. Remember what you deleted there? What did you delete? Not what? Not like, so that we don't forget. Not what? Not like. That's what you deleted. Okay. Now, save that data. I'm going to save it as... Uh, Let's call it, let me save it here, under student, under data, I'll save it as uh, inter categorical, uh, don't call it categorical, and I'll save it there. Okay, I've saved it now. Now go now back to your MATLAB, I want you to load the, open another sheet there on your Take that data, I'm going to just copy this. I'm copying this, this code, okay? I'll copy this code, I open another on title page, I paste it there. Now, I want you to now go back. I want to go and copy the extension where you keep that data, where you've deleted, okay? Where you've deleted the, where you've created the space for the categorical. Now, mine is in my file. What I'm going to do, I'll go to my file. It's in uh, under the student. Uh, go to my file. It's under the student note. Data is here. This is my. Can you see that? Yeah. Now right click like you did earlier on. Go to property. Go to security. Copy the extension. When you copy the extension, come back to your MATLAB and paste that extension here. Just paste it in between. Just repetition of what we did earlier on, then paste it there. 
Remember that I don't use CSV, I only use XLS. Okay? And you see, he has computed for me. Now, what I want you to see, I've created a problem. That's a problem for categorical data. How am I going to replace that missing data? Do that first before we move on to the next day. Okay? Have you all done that? You see, this is a very crucial aspect of machine learning. If you don't get pre-process of data right, you will mess up the whole system. You must have all the tricks with you how to do pre-process of your data. That's why I'm taking my time for you to understand and also get it. Have you done that, everybody? You are with me, okay? Okay, now we will go to categorical data because we have intention to replace this. I want you to go to that uh, notepad I gave you. You see data dot opinion because the title of that section is opinion. Okay, you will say data dot opinion. Okay. Then the next syntax is categorical, okay? Because you, it's a type of that data you want to deal with and you want to replace to be categorical. And which area do you want to deal with? It's the opinion side. It will be data done that, okay? But what name is this? You must check on your MATLAB what is the name you return. What name does call this data for you? So that you don't use it. In my own case, I think I call it a different name. Therefore, go to your MATLAB, look at what you call it. It's still data, that's fine. You call it data, then I'm lucky. Okay. If you copy that, paste that. Copy the copy that. Then come here, paste that. Okay. Then I press enter. See what he has done. Now he said undefined. Okay, he has put undefined there. Did you see that? Sorry? Now the next one is now you are going to pass a, an argument where you say the mode. Instead, we use me earlier on, it's now moved. Okay? The number of how many times you have the occurrence of that particular number so that I can approximate what that particular space should be. That's where we call that. It can be here, yeah, you can call it whatever name you want to call it. You can call it frequency, FQ, equal to mode, data, dot, opinion. Okay, whatever name you want to call it. You want to find the frequency of that number that will close to the missing number. That's what you want to do. Now, you copy that. In my own case, I just call it data opinion. Then I come here, I paste it, then I say, does that. Then he has find the frequency for me. Remember that it's still defined, but he has not updated it. Now I'll go back. Now I'll go and copy now. Do the missing data. Now, pay attention to me. Selo was asking me earlier on and say, how do you do categorical data? You see, fill the missing data. In the case of a numeric data, we did this. But what is different with categorical data is that change the cell to string. We want you to change the cell now to string. Are you following me now? If you're dealing with categorical data, you must pass this particular argument into it. Change the cell to string. Without this, you are not going to make sense. Then we say change the cell to string with most occurrence. That is the name of that particular data you find the frequency. Are you with me now? Now that's what we are going to do now.
Did you see something now? Yes. What has what, what do you see? What do you see there? Tell me what has happened. He has replaced what? Yes, not like. Not like. He has replaced it. For it's a categorical data. Have you done it on your own? Yeah. You got the same thing. Now, that means you can actually approximate a categor missing categorical data if you don't know it. And that is what we've done there. It's very, very crucial for you to understand how it works. Is that clear to everybody? Are you all happy with that? Eh? Are you all happy with that? Now the next thing is that we need to update it. We need to update the table. Okay? We need to update the table. Remember to update the table, all you have to do is copy the data. The name of the data in the opinion, report to the opinion, we do that, then we, we update the table. Somebody say yes, that means you've done that. Yes. You see now, the table is updated. Can you see now, all the table, they are updated. I've taught you how to update this. I've taught you how to update this. I've taught you how to update the categorical data. That means all the different data you have, you can update them. Yes? Sir, I understand that you will be processing for machine learning. Yes. What is the state of the Sorry? What is the state of the machine You see, the danger with not doing pre-processing data is this. Let's say you have 100 data. You want to do prediction on them. And out of 100 data, 40 of them, let's say 20 here has this. Another 20 has that. Under the categorical, you have 10. 20 plus 20 plus 10. That's 50 out of 100. 50 data is already how? You are only working with only 50. Do you think that will give you a right prediction? No. It will weaken the strength of your prediction. Do you get it? That's why you have to do a pre-process of data and make sure that you satisfy yourself with pre-process. Have you ever seen a woman putting soup together without thinking how to mix the, to cut the, they, they put the whole salt in a one, one small soup. I'm sure the husband will fire that woman. <laughs> she won't come back home. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. You see, it depends. If you have, for example, if I have 100, I have 1,000 data and I have 100 that is corrupt, it's okay for me. I still, I can delete them. It will, you have 1 million data and 100 of them are corrupt. Don't waste your time doing this. We will argue with something when we get there, but. I would still prefer you to do it to make sure that you satisfy yourself within the, the means of uh, you know image. Now, do you know, are you clear with it now? Are you fine? Okay, let's move on. The next stage is what we call a feature scaling. Prof was saying something about Euclidean distance and all those things. Now, I want you to pay attention to this data. Look at this data here very well. If you look at this data, my interest of the two quantity of parameters I want to work on, age and the annual salary, those are two parameters I want to work on. What you see, if you find the range between these two, which of these parameters will dominate the range? Which one? What? If you pass this to, for a, to a machine learning to trade, it will place all the attributes, output attributes, on the huge number because the small number is surprised. Are you following me now? Prof was talking about standardization and normalization. That is the reason why you want, you've heard about equal work, equal pay. Huh? The same thing is equal data, equal machine learning. Now, what you do to achieve that is that you normalize or you standardize the data so that they're on the same scale when you pass them into the machine. 
Are you following me now? Now, when you see now the future scaling comes in. Future scaling means that is the if you look at the annual salary, it dominates the it's going to dominate the result. Now, what is the effect of this? Um, where's the toaster? Now, I put here if future do not have the same numerical scale in value, will cause issue in training that particular machine. Now, there is effect with if the scale of one independent variable, which is the features, features one, features two, is greater than another independent variable. The model will give more important skill, the skill to the independent variable with the larger range, which is this. Now, how do you now make sure that they are on the same platform? And that's what Prof was speaking to. Can you, did you remember when he said standardization and normalization? You remember that? This is where you apply it. You see how we do it in MATLAB. Therefore, the next thing you must do is to make sure that all your input variables are on the same scale. Put them on the same scale. This is very crucial, otherwise you're going to get the skewness in your data. There are two types that is normally used. The first one is normalization. The second one is standardization. Now, there is a debate. The debate is that which one is more prevalent? Normally, I prefer a standardization rather than normalization. Mm -hmm. And if you ask me, I think Prof has proved it one day to us, I'm not sure. Prof, which one would you prefer as well? I prefer standardization instead of normalization because of the mathematical discrepancies that is there. Yeah, well, it depends on the data. Okay. I think uh, mostly standardization works a lot better for numerical data. Okay. And uh, if you have uh, missed data, uh, that is uh, uh, numerical, ordinary, and so on and so forth, uh, standardization will also work because it's a generalization. Now, normalization comes when you have transformation. Mm -hmm. You are transforming categorical data to numerical data. Okay. So then normalization will take care of the rest. Okay. Yeah, do you hear from from prof now? Okay. Now, how do we do what do we do with it? Now let me give you a clear explanation here, and I want you to pay attention to this example. I've given you the link to read more. If you want to read more on the feature scaling. It's simple. I like the way they explain it there. Now, the first one is your technique for feature scaling is in the at the time we call it minimum maximum normalization. The second one is standardization. What are they talking about? It's where you take the, your picture data, one of this, from the minimum of that particular data. If you look at it, if you look at this, which one do you think is minimum? Which one do you think is minimum here? Eight, eight, four. That's, and that is why when you take this from the first one, remember X1, our X1, X1 is this, remember, that is 1. X2 is that, X3 is that, X4 is that. This is what that half means, okay? Now you take it from the minimum. The minimum is this, if you take 54 from 54, what is it? Zero. That's how you get that zero. Do you get it now? Yeah. Then you divide it, okay? Then you take the maximum from the minimum, then you divide it, then you get that, okay? Prof have done that in one of his lectures. What about the standardization? The standardization is you take xi minus the mean divided by the standard deviations of the entire data. And just look at this very well. If you look at the data pattern here, you see there is a sense of not uniformity in the data distribution here. And if you look here, the deviation between the two between the average and that are very close. And that is why I prefer standardization. Because this frequency, it's always a little bit, not that too bad. Do you get it now? That's why I play the two game. And the prof have given you a very clear understanding that if you want to transpose from one point to categorical, from categorical, you better use normalization. But we, 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 you've seen what happened, okay? Now let's let implement. Now let's implement on our data now. 
Okay, let's go to data and let's implement it. The first one is um, read your data. Again, let's read data now into our code. Read the same data. Okay, you remember your data, how to read it. Um, I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to come to my MATLAB and read my data. Otherwise, I can repeat the data again. All I have to do is data. Okay, I've read my data again. You've done that. You can just retype it. You will reload the data for you. Okay? Now, the next stage now is that we want to carry out normalization for. Now, if you look at this code, I want to carry out normalization on the age. That's my normalization. Now, what do you see here? You remember the formula for normalization, we just use that. The data dot age, which is this, which is our x, okay, x, x r, minus the minimum, minus minimum of that particular data, are you following? Divided by the maximum of that data in this column, minus the minimum of that data in this column. Then we pass it, we pass it in. Okay, is that clear? That's your normalization. Okay, let's just press enter. Now, it has normalized that data now. You see that it has normalized it for you. Now, remember there are two features that we are going to work with. We are working with age and annual salary. Remember? Now, I've done for the age, I've done normalization now for the age. I need to do normalization for the annual salary. Is that okay? Okay. Then when I've done that, what, I, what I'm going to do is to pass, I will pass that into data now so that I can up, up, update my data. What I want to do now is to update my data. I'll go there, I'll update my data. Then I'll pass it. I'll pass that. Then you see now, we have updated the age with the normalized data. Are you following me? I'm not going to do for annual salary now, then I will update it. Two steps. You do normalization, then you update the data. That's the next step. Okay? Now. I'm going to carry out normalization now for the annual salary. Which is here. Copy that. Then I'll do that. Just paste. Actually, I've made your life easy. Just copy and paste. And where you want to use it, also use it wisely. Uh, then I need to up, I need to update now the annual salary to be that annual salary. Okay. Normalization for both age 
and the annual salary. Okay, that's the using normalization. Are you okay with that now? You all done. Okay. Now let's do the standardization now. Okay. You have to do both, or you can just do one and proceed. No, you see, I'm just doing both because it's class. By the time when we finish this section, I'm going to generate a template for you for data processing. You make a choice. Which one do I want to use uh, normalization or do I want to use standardization? You make a choice. Your choice. Okay. But let's just walk through it so that we'll be able to generate templates. Okay. Try to load your data again. Let's load the data. Okay. We. Now it's, it's loading the old data, data, and I don't want to load, yeah. I have, for me, I have two data already. I kept it in case like this. I have data without one, data one. They are two, the same data, just I'm just reloading. Otherwise, you have to go back, read table, and copy that data and reload it. Okay, because I've already Damage the existing data is giving me the final output with respect to normalization. I don't want normalization because I want to go back and do standardization on the normal data. Are you following me? Therefore, I have to reload the old data again. Do you get it now? That's what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. The, standard, the standardization one is. You can see the way what it is is age, which I put there. You see, it's your standard standardization age equal to data dot age minus the mean of that data dot age divided by standard deviation of that data dot age. Okay, what? maybe no. Do you know why it's giving me now? Can anybody suspect what is happening? What is happening? Not available data. That's correct. That's what is happening. You see, if you do that, you are processing the data, but you don't take, you don't replace your not available data, and you do standard, you you pass standardization on it. You see what it's going to give you now. The first thing is that you make sure that all the data are in line, okay? That means you have to carry out again that process. You remember that process? Yes. You have to carry all, all of them again. This is unfair to me. I can just give you the X of 5. Eh? 
can just go and eat in the eggs of flour. That's all for the time. Okay, anyway, I don't want to do it. It's going to take time either. It's going to waste my time. Okay, anyway, pass that into it and do the standardization like I've told you. Otherwise, I have to take another time to do that. It's going to waste my time. Then you do that for annual, annual salary. You do that for the age. Then you update the data. Now, let's go to the next problem with data. We call it outlier. Prof, I think Prof, you mentioned outlier. The dimension, I think it was in previous lecture. Uh, yeah. How do you deal with outliers? Okay, what does the outliers mean? Now, if you pass a linear regression, for example, like this line, you have this dot of data, you just suddenly see some data. They just stand alone, like a stubborn chart. They just stand aloof. Mm -hmm. That kind of data is contributing error into the entire result that you have. Now, how do you take care of the outlier in your data? There are about a few methods, MATLAB using a median to determine the outliers. You use a median to, to, to determine your outliers. So that when you have a data that just outrageous like this, then you have to take care of them. That's what we call outliers. Other method they use what we call me, moving median. Those are the two methods that are very popular with MATLAB. Then step two is that find outlier data using zero and one and update data. Now, what MATLAB will do when you pass in some argument into it? There is a, a command that will pass into it now. When it does, it will, normally if there's no outlier, it's going to return zero, zero, zero. For example, when you pass the, the, the function to it, if this data are not, they don't have any abnormal data, it will return zero, zero, zero. That means there's no outlier. But if, for example, 55, 55 does not fall within the range of this available data. If you plot this, there will be 55 around here. Are you following me? Yes. Now, it will return one. That shows there is outliers in that data. It tells you that data has an outlier. You need to remove it and replace it with the normal one that fall within the range. Do you, do you get that? If you have one million data, there's no way you can use your highs to say, there is a, I'm having 100, but now I'm having 2 million. How do you deal with that data? Well, you can use MATLAB to detect where is outliers in your data. Then you replace it. Now, let's play with it and see how do you deal with it. Are you getting it now? Yes. Is it getting irritating or interesting? Interesting. <laughs> okay. Yes, let's do it. Ah, uh, we are learning today. Okay, if you are learning, I'm happy. Okay, I want you to. I want us to load a new data. You know, one mistake that I've done that I didn't give you. There is a data that I've already prepared for each of those, for categorical, for outliers and all. But I didn't give you. I've already, that's why we have to redo it again. But. Uh, where's my USB? Let me see if I can give you. I can give all of you. Or you can rebuild it. Which one do you want? What you can do is that, remember we've corrected the data, the previous spreadsheet, the spreadsheet we, we deleted something on. Go back to that spreadsheet, fill it up with the missing data, then we reload it. Then we don't, I don't need to give you the other data. Are you following? Let's reload. Go back to your that data, that spreadsheet, which is here. The answer here is not, um, let me go here. The answer here is what? Not like, okay. Then what is missing here? Who knows the value that is missing here? I'll just fill it up. Let me just put 40, it's okay. Um, I'll just put 13,000, okay. 13,000. Cello, I've decided to use your short method. You like short method. Okay, I'll fill up that data so that it's easy for me now. Nothing is missing again. I'm going to save it and I'm going to load it back into the map. Okay? Okay, I'm going to close it now. What I'm going to do, I'll go to MATLAB. 
I'm going to copy this and I'm going to read the data. Copy that, open another one, paste now. Now go to that spreadsheet of yours where you save it. Go to the folder. What is the name of that spreadsheet? Get the property, click on property and click on security. Okay, I'll copy that. Then I'll go to my master. Then I'll fill it up. I will replace this. I will place this. Paste. Then I will run it. Then I will run it. There's a visible question mark that I always stand on the, at the back of my data. I can't see it, but it's there. I detected an error, now I got it. <laughs> okay, now I pass it now. If you see this data, it's okay. Are you following now? We use that spreadsheet. Okay, now what we have to do is how do we deal with outliers now? Is what we have to deal with. What we're gonna do is that we're gonna pass this function did you see this? This function is called is there outlier is question mark is outlier in this data. That's what it's saying. Do you have outlier in this data? This command is what we now take out. It must return zero if there's no outliers. Everything must be zero down. If there is outliers, that must it will give you one where there's outliers. Okay, I want to pass that command now. Copy this and pass that command. Copy that. Pass that. Now, look at what look at what he has done. Did you notice something? That's where there is outliers. In my data under the age, there's outliers one out of them. And that outlier is, what is it? It's 55, you know. If you go there, look at your data, this is it, 55. This is the outlier. Then that data, it's gonna make a lot of noise when you calculate your error difference. That is why at times you realize that you have a bad error Difference when you do when we get to performance analysis, you will see what can make you to have a bad error. It's not like you have a bad your concept is not right. At times the data you are putting in is not correct. You don't you don't take care of your data before you pass them in. Then you have a bad error output in your performance analysis, and you think that oh no, I, I've lost it now. It's not like your system is not performing, but you didn't do a proper data proof processing before you do all those things. Now, did you see the outlier there? Now, let's try the other one, which is annual salary. If we can find the outlier there. Just change the age to annual salary, okay? Take the same code, repeat it again, and put the annual salary. Replace this with annual salary. Did you see something there? In my there is one. Yeah. Because I changed that data. 
I have one. Because that's the data I replace in the missing one. That's my outlier. Do you get it now? Now, the next question is, how do I take care of these outliers in my data? That's the next question. Does MATLAB give me a provision to replace them? The answer is yes. Okay. Let's see how we are going to take care of our outliers. Now, in this, you will pass this particular syntax What I'm going to pass now into this. Now you updated the data now. Okay, you have updated the data for me. But uh, from here. Pass the second one to update for the age as well. Then I'm going to do replacement. Uh, I want to do replacement for something. Okay, I think I've done that. I've updated it. I've updated my data. Do you see the way I updated? Look at this. I've updated all of the data back. Look at what I've done. That extension into the outliers, whatever. I've done one outlier for the age, the second outlier one for the annual salary. Okay? I just make sure that I have a computation table now. That's what I've done. But I've not replaced, I've not refilled that particular outlier. Now what I want you to do now is to fill the outlier. I want you to replace the I want you to fill up to refill the outliers now. Go come here, copy fill age. Okay? Copy that. Now, we want to fill the outlier indirectly with the center. You can use center, the mold, and all those things to fill it. I'm using this function to refill the outlier under the edge. There are about three types you can have. You can fill center, you can fill the previous. Those are the syntax you can use to fill up the outlier. Fill the center, fill the previous, or you use the word clip. Now, those particular three or four syntaxes, you can use them to refill the outliers. Clip, center, and previous. You can use those three command functions to replace any outliers in your data. Okay, is that fine? Okay, if you're okay, I'm okay. Now, here is another question with data, which I think you must be able to understand today. Somebody said, Prof was explaining and I was listening to him. Prof, you remember? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Prof, you remember when you say when we were talking about categorical data? Mm -hmm. Yes. If you look at this case, we are looking at location. Yes. US, Asia, and Africa. Asia, Africa. That is the feature under the location. Mm -hmm. Now I want to move this now. I want them to be represented with a numerical equivalent. Now, what I want to do is to now say I have US, Asia, Africa. Those are the three. Now, when this line is for US, this side must be one, other must be zero. When this side is Africa, this side must be one, other must be zero. 
when the sun is Asia, it must be one that will be zero. Then we have converted this into numerical given. And that's what I'm going to pass. Now, there's no function in MATLAB that does it. But I'm going to give you the script now. Anytime you have a problem, for example, they said um, you have about three k's. Um, let's just say, produce something. They give you all the attributes and say this attribute will lead, lead to art failure. You will add art failure. Your heart will be healthy. Okay? Your heart is normal. These are the three categories. Now, how do you move this now to that? Most of the case study normally fall in this particular category. Now, you will, I'm going to give you a script now that will convert when you have this, all you have to pass is to pass this particular argument into that script. It's going to re redesign your data in this format. Then you can do machine learning using this. It becomes very easy. Okay, now, open your file. If you open your folder, there is a, there is a section there where I said, um, open a folder under that. I hope I have it. If I don't have it, I'm going to cry. Uh, I think I gave it, but let's see. I should. Uh, is it encode? Okay. No, go to encoding. You see, that's a, that's a, yeah, this is it. Open that MATLAB. You see, for me, I have two versions. I have 2019 and 2013. I only installed 2019 because of you, because the function was not going through my 2013. Now, that is the folder. Okay, you see this folder? That is the function that's going to convert that data into that particular category that I've shown you now. It will take that particular function and replace them. Are you following me now? Now, what you are going to do, save that particular MATLAB into the library, okay? Into the library of the MATLAB. Keep it there so that when you call for the function, it goes there and take that to run and compute it for you, okay? So I can't open it. Why can't you open it? Huh? Say that the picture doesn't have any... Are you? Sir? You said you can't open it. Yeah, you said I, I don't have a file to open it. Why not? I have MATLAB. Yes. Why you say you can't open it? Is, is, it, is it applicable to everybody? I don't think so. Huh? No, sir. To help? Who else cannot open it?
I'm just trying to find a way to maneuver myself. Okay, what you do, are you, you say, can you open it this way? He said, find this way. Can you, anybody can open this way? Yeah. yeah. Okay, copy that. Okay, copy that now. Do this, copy this. Okay, when you copy it, then go to, uh, where's my 2019? Okay, go to open another one, another one title. Are you following me? Yeah. Huh? Yes. Then paste it there. Okay, paste it on another on title. Are you done? You've done that? Yes. Okay, run it. Okay, then say save in that title with that name function. Okay? Then save that. It's going to complain, but never mind. For me, think, why does it say this? Okay. Now, once you've done that, you've done that, run it. Have you done that? You've run it. Yeah. Okay. It's, sorry? Copy, paste it on the untitled the notepad, then run it. You've done that? Okay. Once you've done that, now go into this, into your notepad. Copy this, because what we want to do now, we want it to convert that particular data Copy this and now run it. I want you to now run the data and the data location dot location. Now go here into the, the command line, put it there, and say run. You can see now when I run it, what I've got. He has converted this into this. Have you done that? Uh, can you repeat? Eh? Uh, the function will work. It's just like, okay, let me do it again. Everybody just look at me. I'm going to do it again. Okay? Uh, open a new, open a new title notepad here. Look at it. Open that brand new one. You've done that? Okay. Now, copy. If you have this, copy this. I've copied that. Can you see that? Copy. You open it. Isn't it? Did you open from here? You've opened yes. already? Yes. Okay, brilliant. Copy that, paste it here. Did you see that? I've done that? Okay, do that now. Just follow me. I'm going to be patient with you. <laughs> Have you done that? Yes. Okay, go to run. Run it. You will pop that out. Don't change anything. Have you done that? Yes. Okay, say save. It's going to complain. That's why you hear pow. Because it was there before. With, for me, it was there. It will complain with you. But it was there for me before. That's why you make that sound. You want me to replace it and he, all those things. Have you done that? Yes. Okay. Now, go to your notepad. This notepad. I get, there's a notepad where I've been taking the command from. Is it? Copy this. Copy this notepad. This particular statement because that data is in location i want to change location data i want 
them now to represent in that part. I want to convert the categorical now into that string of that data. That's what I want to do. Copy that, okay, because the data fall under the location. Now, when you copy that, go to your MATLAB, command prompt, put it there, press enter. The minute you do that, is it clear? Are you okay now? Yeah. Then it generates that. Now, once you have done that, your, your data is ready for machine learning. Because now, you've made, you prepare your data in a way that it is workable. Don't, don't ever lose that script that I've given you. It's a very important script. You just need to alter the location in which the data you want to, you want to classify. You just change the location of that data alone. That's all you have to do with that data. In that script, nothing more. It's going to prepare that data for you. You know, somebody was working on it. He uh, was working on uh, classifications of, I think it was classification of, uh, uh, what was it classified? That classification has about four different categories. But they labeled it. I'll give you an example. It was a, I think it was a, image, either something like image of something, then they have about four classes. He doesn't know how he's going to make that target data to be in different classes. Then that's how we got the script. Then we'll be, using, we'll be using it for a different thing and it's working. You don't change the colon you want to have that different various classes. You change that features alone, then you run it. Save it into the directory of the MATLAB, then you run that function. You are fine. There is no function in MATLAB that can allow you to do this. You, you have to keep that script, don't lose it. It is important to be useful for you. Okay. Are you all happy with that? Yes. Okay. Now, there's another problem. Let's talk about this problem. There are times, open that, if you have, open that spreadsheet on your date on your slide open that spreadsheet and save it save that spreadsheet are you with me or you've lost okay good we are not we are now in the second to the last slide on that categorical data with order you know there are times you have data but with order for example you collect data from DSTV they said the best customer uh, sorry, the, the, the worst claim, the good claim, the bad one, the mm. not approachable. They color it with logo. But each of those logos represent one, two, three, four. That is what they call a categorical with data, with order. Because they are not giving you number. They give you like a color. Like blue, let's say green, good one. Yellow, half -rich. Red, he must be fired. There's no number designation with it, but they are in order of goodness. Is green, yellow, and what is red. Now, how do you take that order in categorical data and now use MATLAB to interpret that and discretize that? Do you get that? You, you see people, who, they are in informatics. They normally serve questionnaire. They like questionnaire. Prof, I know you are not in informatics. I'm not joking. <laughs> They start questionnaire. Are you sleeping at the right time? Yes. Are you drinking 10 gallons of water? No. Now, how do you interpret those data? And that is a categorical data with order. Now, I'm going to give you, with, I want you to open that spreadsheet. It, it, it has that particular data of that nature. Open that. Let's open that spreadsheet. I want you to save that spreadsheet. Save the spreadsheet now. Wherever you want to save it, you can save it on your, um, whatever folder you have been using is okay. Okay, I'll save it here. Now, I want you to, we will now import that data. I want you to import that data now. Go to your command line like you normally do, read data basically, which you have been doing for long. Okay, I'm 
going to copy that. Okay, open another section on title. I've done that now. Okay. Now I'm going to go to my data and uh, take the import. Where, what did I call it when I said it? Worksheet. Huh? <laughs> Worksheet oh, yeah. in lecture one. Oh, okay. I'll go there, open the property as usual, I'll copy it. Okay, then I'll go back here. Then I'll place this. It's a dangerous one. It's not in the format. Can you see something here? That data is not in a good format. Okay? What I want to do, I have to let me put it on the uh, on the on the Excel format. Okay? It's not in the format that I want. Therefore I can't really read to it. Let me just open Excel. But if you get it, if you if you import it, are you okay with it? Yes, CSV. Okay, I can put it as CSV, but let me use my Excel. I will just go to data import from that. You can save it as CSV, which is the best. It might not like you enjoy it a lot. Mm -hmm. Now it's not showing me. Ah, uh, you saved Jaguar. You see, look at Matt. It was Jaguar. Look at what he gave me. Whew. Okay. You said I should save it as? CSV. Okay. Uh, CSV. Which one? M, M DOS or? Yes. Uh, you can send me the SMS DOS or Which one? Yes. DOS or? Yeah. Okay, that one. Yeah. Yes. Eh? Yes. If I'm wrong, I will, I will hit you up. <laughs> uh, some pictures. Yes. Yes. What should I say? Yes. yes, okay. If it is no, that's your problem. Now. Okay, let me just uh, copy it again. Go to that side. Yeah, no, it works. Sorry? It works. It works as what? If you save it as a CSV. Oh, okay. Uh, this one? Yeah, it's this one. Therefore, let me just go there, click property. Security. Okay, yeah, I think good. I'll copy that. Okay. Okay. Roll it. Yeah, this is fine now. Okay, now I want you to pay attention to this. If you look at this data, can anybody tell me where do you have, where do you rate high level like uh, low, high? Is this column? Are you following? We want to convert this column into order. We want to make this to be in order. High, very mass, average. And how do you do that in a, in a MATLAB, using a MATLAB? Now, here is a is a command that you can use. Just 
come down here when you don't have the earth must be on because here you say look at it it's a categorical data okay when you categorical data there's a function I need to give you again sorry there's a function I need to give you again um, do I have it here? Oh, we see it. Run this function again. Also, keep that, keep particular, keep this function as well. Yeah. You can see these are not easy, eh? Yeah, it is. Okay, copy this function. The way you did that one earlier on is the way you are going to do this. Open Wait, another folder, another, um, on time today, you run it. Run it again and keep it. Now, don't worry, it's fine. Just talking is all. Uh, then we come here, take that. Send the function, I'll define it. Is anybody one working? Yes. Yours is working? Yes. Okay, what magic did you do? <laughs> that I cannot do. I don't know what you're what, what magic you do. Uh, I just said it like it was said. Sorry? I just said it like it was said. Okay. But I said it is not working. Okay. But anyway, what it's going to do as output, like you can see, but did you run this as well? Hello, you know Run this one. Yes, that's the one. Okay. Does it give you what? Is he able to classify them? Yes. The okay. Right. If one of you have gotten it, then all of you have gotten it. <laughs> okay, now, I think you've seen the way it takes for us to convert the categorical data with order and to uh, achieve all those things that we've achieved. What I want to tell you now, the last slide, under that slide. Look at the last slide, under here. This is where I have, open this, I have the template of every program that I've computed here now for you. Okay. Oh, you see this is the data I was looking for. It's inside that folder, the last folder. Okay. Did you see that folder? That's the code. That's the last two code we've run as a function. The MATLAB code and everything is there. Okay. And the data for each of them is what I put inside there. Okay. When you run your categorical data, Categorical data with order is this one. I just labeled them. That's the data I was looking for that I said I didn't give you. You have it. Look at your last slide. Open that SIM file. Yes. All the code, all the functions that I've given you, the first function, categorical data to dummy variable is there. Categorical data to number is also there. All the code for this section of data processing, they are all there. The templates are there. Are you okay now? Yes. Are you all fine? Please do me a favor, run that when you get home to pre-process your own data so that you can see what it can do for you. Okay, we are going to have five minutes break. 
Prof said you are going to have a picture with, with him. Then we come back just to stretch our leg. Then we now go to the beginning of machine learning. <laughs> now we, we finish the preprocessed data. That's number one. Now we are going to KNN now. Okay, let's quickly do that. Have a picture outside, then we come back just to stretch our leg. Sorry, let's figure out that video, then we can come back so that we can continue.